नमस्कार टुडे वी विल बी कंटिन्यूइंग विथ आर डिस्कशन ऑन द वेरियस थ्योरीज ऑफ सेलिंग दिस इज आर लेक्चर नंबर 19 व्हिच इज द फोर्थ लेक्चर इन द फोर्थ मॉड्यूल एंड इफ यू रिकॉल इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी वर स्पीकिंग अबाउट द थ्योरीज ऑफ सेलिंग वेयर वी डिस्कस्ड द आइडिया थ्योरी ऑफ सेलिंग एंड द राइट सेट ऑफ सरकमस्टांसिस थ्योरी ऑफ सेलिंग which were the two seller oriented approaches to selling uh, thereafter we also did the buying formula theory of selling which is a, a buyer oriented or a buyer approach to uh, the theories of selling uh, today we shall be moving on with our discussion uh, on the various theories of selling and we shall be talking about one theory which is a buyer and a seller oriented both a combination of both uh, which is the uh behavioral equation theory and then we shall also be st- speaking about uh spin selling which is actually a methodology it is not a theory but it is a methodology as to how to bring about successful sales so let us begin with our discussion uh on this on uh, on the uh, behavioral equation theory now the behavioral equation theory was proposed by professor howard from the columbia graduate school of business and it bases itself on the findings of behavioral research it is a combination of both the a buyer and a seller oriented theory of selling and based on behavioral research it uses the stimulus response model uh, in one way it is also a refined form of uh, the right set of circumstances theory so the behavioral behavioral equation theory uh, which bases itself on behavioral uh, research uh uses the spit stimulus uh, response model and uh, we have seen earlier uh, when we did the uh, you know right set of circumstances theory that there itself also we saw that there was a combination of the stimulus and the response however the behavioral equation theory uh, uses uh, the right set of circumstances theory in a more refined form so it is in a way a refined form of the right set of circumstances theory now here buying behavior is explained as a purchase decision process and as various phases of learning which happen on the part of the buyer uh, the theory bases itself on four elements of the learning process which is one drives two cues three response and four reinforcement so this particular theory uh, the behavioral equation theory uh, is explained as a purchase decision process and as phases of learning and uh, what it incorporates is uh, four different elements of learning which are drives cues response and reinforcement now let us uh, talk uh, a little more on these four elements and let us see what they mean now what are drives Dri- drives are strong internal stimuli that motivate a response from a buyer now these drives are internal stimuli that actually motivate a buyer to respond in a particular manner they motivate a response from the buyer and these drives could be either innate or learned now innate drives are physiological in nature and they pertain to our physiology they arise from our physiology for example uh, need for food water sleep so we have hunger thirst sleep these are all innate drives which move a person uh, towards a particular response Uh, the second kind of drives which we have are called learned drives now learned drives are psychology in nature they arise out of our psychology for example the need for esteem the need for status etc second now the second element here for in learning is cues now cues are weak stimuli that affect as to when a buyer will react or when a buyer will respond to a particular stimuli so these cues can be further classified as triggering cues and non triggering cues now what are triggering cues triggering cues are those which uh, initiate a purchase process for a particular product or service so they instantaneously make a pro- consumer react or respond to the stimuli so these are weak stimuli that will initiate a res- purchase decision process for a pr- particular product or a service and so they the triggering cues initiate the the buyer to respond now or to act now so they initiate a purchase decision process for a particular product or service in the mind of the consumer the consumer reacts or responds uh, to uh, towards the purchase or towards the intention to purchase now what are non triggering cues non triggering cues also influence the purchase decision for a product or service but they do not initiate it they are non triggering as the term goes if we see triggering is something which will immediately make somebody act 
immediately make somebody respond or react but non triggering cues are those which influence a purchase decision process for a product or for a service offering but they do not initiate it they may operate any time even if the buyer is not thinking of a purchase even if he does not realize he has a need and these non triggering cues again could be further categorized into product cues and informational cues again i would emphasize upon the difference of the triggering and the non triggering cues cues are weak stimuli that will effect as to when the buyer will respond triggering cues will make an make a consumer or make a buyer react immediately respond immediately they will initiate the purchase process for a particular product or service non triggering cues are those which will influence the decision process any time but they will not initiate it they may operate at any point in time even when the buyer is not thinking of a purchase and these non triggering cues could be again categorized into two which are product cues and informational cues now what are product cues product cues are those which are external stimuli related to and received from the product for example the packaging of the product the size of the product the color of the product the smell of the product the size of the product so these are all external stimuli related to and received from the product received by whom received by the consumer or the buyer so the buyer receives a product cue now again this product cue is something which is external to and related to the product and they are external stimuli and they will may or may not uh, initiate the decision process for a buyer because these are non triggering in nature of course they may suddenly get triggered as you know even when the buyer is not thinking of a purchase the second kind of cues which we have are the informational cues now informational cues are external stimuli pertaining to the symbolic nature of the product they are not internal to the they, they are again external stimuli but they do not pertain to the product as such or the product features or attributes but on the other hand they pertain to the symbolic nature of the product for example information received from advertisements or from sales persons or from uh, you know word of mouth from others okay so these become very symbolic in nature as and and are typically more to do with a it's typically to do with information which is uh, which gives or talks about the symbolic nature of the product so these are external stimuli pertaining to the symbolic nature of the product okay information received from advertisements now advertisements we all know will not only talk about the product maybe about the attributes features but they will also have a creative uh, strategy an executional framework where there'll be lot of drama there'll be colors there'll be music there'll be jingles and uh, the positioning of the product uh, also gets affected by the way the advertisement has been designed similarly sales people may talk about both the functionality of the product as well as the emotional benefits or the symbolic benefits that the product brings about and again word of mouth communication which takes place between consumers when they share information or give advice to each other or you know uh, you know share experiences in all these case also lot of uh, information that is shared is very symbolic in nature so these are a part of what we refer to as informational cues now both product cues and informational cues are actually referred to as non triggering cues because they are weak stimuli they may operate any time even when the uh, buyer is not thinking of a purchase process they will influence a purchase decision but they may not immediately initiate it so this is the difference these are both product cues and informational cues now sometimes both product and informational cues may also act as triggering cues they may become triggering for example in case of sales promotion where there are deals and discounts and prices suddenly drop in those cases uh, the consumer may rush towards the nearest store to buy a particular product or a service offering or he may order online and so forth similarly in the case of impulse buying also the product cues the size, the color of the product or the packaging of the product or again uh, in case of deals and discounts suddenly uh, people decide to act on impulse and they go in for impulse purchase even uh, even without planned for it or having you know the need for it as such so uh, they it is more of a uh, you know impulse purchase and so this again uh, in this way prices and discounts could also uh, you know as informational cues they may act as triggering cues so this is what we mean by what cues are now the third element that we have in uh, the learning which are which actually become is incorporated into the uh, theory is the response now response is the reaction of the of the prospect 
or an actual and existing buyer. So, uh, it is the reaction which comes from a buyer whether he is a prospective buyer or whether he is an actual buyer. And the fourth element which we have here is reinforcement. Now, reinforcement is defined as an event that intensifies the buyer's predisposition towards making a particular response. So, uh, we have response in the form of a reaction from the buyer, uh, whether he is an existing buyer or a prospective buyer. And we have reinforcement, which is actually an event that intensifies the buyer's predisposition towards making a particular response. Now, according to the theory, uh, you know, uh, we have a response or an internal response tendency from the buyer, uh, which is uh, which which is equivalent to uh, the predisposition or the inward response tendency or the habit multiplied by the present drive level or the motivation multiplied by the incentive potential or the value of the product which would bring in potential satisfaction multiplied by the intensity of the cues whether they are triggering cues or non triggering cues. Now, that is how Howard proposed an equation and he said that B is equal to P multiplied by D multiplied by K multiplied by V. Now, what is B? B is the response or the internal response tendency which is the act of purchasing a particular uh, product or a uh, company's product or a brand and this uh, internal response tendency is equal to a person's predisposition or inward res response tendency which is habit multiplied by the drive level or the motivation which is D multiplied by the value of the product or the potential satisfaction he sees. Uh, in terms of the, as, as an incentive potential which he sees in the product multiplied by the intensity of all the cues whether they are triggering cues or non triggering cues which is V. So, what Howard proposed is a multiplicative relationship and in case any of the elements is 0 there would be no response or no internal response from the buyer or from the prospective buyer. So, he said that uh, for a particular respond to, response to occur, it is important that there is a, a you know a predisposition which is also matched or you know which goes along with uh, the level of motivation which again goes along with an incentive potential or the value of the product uh, in terms of potential satisfaction which a customer sees uh, or a prospective customer sees in the product and which is again multiplied by the cues which uh, he actually receives uh, and it is the strength of the cues which, which constitutes the V. So, uh, this is how he explained. Now, the salesperson has a very vital role to influence uh, P, D, K and V. In the salesperson can influence uh, the predisposition or the inward response tendency, he can influence the present drive level or the motivation, he can uh, influence the incentive potential or the value of the product uh, in terms of uh, the potential satisfaction that a customer is seeking. He can also you know give strength to the cues whether they are triggering cues or non triggering cues. So, in this way uh, the, the salesperson uh, can influence all the elements, he can influence the predisposition by interacting with the customer explaining how the attributes of the product can be rewarding to the buyer, he can actually affect or influence the predisposition. Uh, by showing a need benefit linkage, by providing information cues for the for, especially in the case of first time purchase, uh, he can actually you know level increase the level of motivation or have an influence on D which is motivation. In case of repeat and uh, routine purchases he can also have you know influence the triggering cues which again would uh, you know increase the level of motivation or D. Similarly, he can he can impact the K by making his brand to appear more superior to those of the competitors and so in this way he would be talking about the incentive potential and finally, he can also influence the V or the intensity of cues by bringing about a change in the intensity of his efforts both in terms of product uh, cues, both in terms of informational cues, in terms of triggering and in terms of non triggering cues. So, this is how Howard explained the, uh, the behavioral equation theory uh, where he spoke about the response and the stimulus and the circumstances uh, in the right set of circumstances in a more refined manner concept which is spin selling. Now, spin selling here uh, is not a theory, it is a customer uh, you know communication focused sales methodology which we will see is, is, is used worldwide uh, you know and uh, it's become very popular as a way of conducting uh, fruitful transactions and uh, you know as a way of building very successful 
buyer seller diets now uh, the concept of spin selling was proposed by a person by the name of neil rackham and neil rackham uh, was the former president uh, and the founder of the huthweight corporation uh, this this concept called spin selling was first published in 1998 uh, which and 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 what he wrote and uh, you know explained uh, was uh, it was a result of a careful observation and an extensive research uh, conducted by him over a period of 12 years and uh, with a sample of 35000 sales, sales calls so his findings were published in the form of a book and uh, this particular concept emphasizes upon the importance of asking the right questions in a sales process and to to focus more on how should one lead conversations with customers so as to result in fruitful uh, you know consequences now a it is spin selling is a communication focused sales methodology which trains sales persons to ask the right kind of question so that the prospect would be able to understand that the sales persons product or service offering is the right solution to uh, their problem so uh, what uh, neil rackham emphasized upon was that it's very important for sales persons to ask the right set of questions and this right set of questions in the sales process uh, you know would in a way lead from one stage to the other and in this form uh, through this communication focused methodology a sales persons would be able to ask this you know understand the you know the customer better and they would be able to show how their product or service offering is the right solution to the customer's problem uh, instead of the sales person explaining uh, that this would be the best solution the buyer or the prospect would himself be able to realize that the sales person's product or service offering is the best solution so it is not the sales person who would say that yes my product meets your need and we help solve your problem but it is the buyer or the prospective buyer who would himself realize uh, through the kind of questions which the sales person would ask uh, that you know this, the prospect would be able to realize that yes what the prospect or what the sales person is offering me is the solution to my problem so um neil rackham emphasized upon the importance of asking the right questions in the sales process that means how should one lead conversations with their customers and uh, asking the right questions so that the prospect would be able to understand that the sales person's product or service offering is the right solution to his problem now the term spin uh, is an acronym for uh, the four kinds of questions that sales persons must put forth situation questions problem questions implication questions and need pay off questions now according to neil rackham a successful sales call is one where the buyer talks more and this implies that the sales persons are the one who are going to ask questions and then listen the asking of such questions implies a rapport building between the uh, the the sales person and the prospect and building of this sales rapport would make the buyer feel even more comfortable to further talk so according to neil rackham uh, the sales person should be the ones asking questions the buyers must answer and it is the job of the sales person to listen so conversations where the sales person will mostly listen and buyers will talk will be the ones which will have the highest close win rate now the fundamental take away from spin selling is that the key to a successful uh, you know uh, to a successful sales lay in the quality of the questions which are asked by a sales person an appropriate question would speed up the selling process on the other hand an inappropriate one would slow it down or would terminate it completely so according to neil rackham it is important that the sales persons talk less they listen more it is the prospect who should talk more the sales person's job is to ask the right kind of questions and they listen to the replies which are being made by the prospects the buyer will talk more it would mean a rapo building the rapo building would also mean that the buyer would be comfortable to talk even more and uh, the key to the successful sales would lie in the right kind of questions which are asked by the sales person an appropriate question would speed up the selling process while an inappropriate one would slow it down or would terminate it completely now conversations where the sales persons mostly listened 
asked questions and then listened okay and let the buyers talk were the ones which were which had the highest close win rate so for a for for a sales process or a sales uh, call to be uh, effective it was important that the right kind of questions were posed by the sales person and then who then would assume the role of a listener and uh, where such situations where the sales persons majorly listened and let the buyers talk were the ones which were going to be more successful now let us discuss what these different kinds of questions could be first is what we have the situation questions now the situation questions are the ones which start the which start a conversation so they form the starting point of a conversation between the sales person and a prospect such questions basically concentrate on collecting information and facts about the prospect's current situation so the objective of the sales person here is to develop an understanding of the prospect and his precise situation and to establish the context of further dialogue that is to identify the problems and the pain points that the prospect is going through now to encourage uh, you know questions from the prospect so that a solution uh, you know can be presented later uh, you know so work backward from problems a product can solve for a buyer and so it's important to generate such questions now it's also important to understand that situation questions are the least important and the least powerful of the four questions and they have very less impact on the outcome of the overall discussion the more of such asked in a sales call the less likely that a sales would happen so it's very important that the sales persons concentrate very little on the situation questions and in order to lessen these questions the sales qu person must plan one plan well uh, they, 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 how would they be able to do that? They would be able to do that by learning about a prospect's current processes, resources, results and problems. Uh, so, so, in this way, they would have lesser uh, situation questions to ask and it is always best to ask less situation questions because the situation questions have lesser impact on the overall uh, outcome and uh, they, they, are not, they, they are least powerful or the least impactful. However, situation uh, questions will provide the information one needs to address uh, you know, the rest of the questions and take the conversation forward to a fruitful end. So, situation questions provide the information one needs <coughs> to address the rest of the questions and to take the conversation forward to a fruitful uh, end. Now, uh, it, it, for example, here what the salesperson is trying to do, he is basically trying to talk to uh, the prospect and just inquire on his current state of the kind of problems he is facing or of the kind of problem he is into and if in, so, so in a way he is triggering a, a dialogue where the sales where the prospect would suddenly you know bring to surface the kind of problem he faces. So, this is a situation question which would particular, part, particularly deal with the kind of problem or the kind of pain point a uh, sales uh, a prospective customer is facing. Second is problem questions. Now, problem questions make the prospect aware of the fact that there is a problem that needs to be taken care of. Situation questions would just lay the background, but the realization of a problem, the realization that there is a problem that must be dealt with, uh, you know, is something which is a problem question. So, they deal with the prospect's pain point, uh, the problems, the dissatisfactions, and they encourage the prospect to state their implied needs. Now, they also help a prospect identify a problem that has been overlooked or has or has been in the subconscious. Uh, for example, a new pain point will make uh, you know the prospect look for a solution. This solution ultimately would be the one which lies in uh, the product or service offering which the salesperson has to offer. So, the salesperson must ask questions and use subtle techniques to help the prospect realize on his own that there is a problem. This realization would help him act as his own change agent. Okay. So, the realization of the problem would pave the wave. So, if a question is, uh, are you into a problem? If this is a situation question, the problem question would become, do you think this is really a problem and it is, it is in, in, in impacting your business? So, this is the difference. The situation question would just walk off say, how are things? How are situations? What is the kind of you know experience these days in the market or in your factory or the kind of things you are facing? But a problem question becomes, is it really a problem? Do you think so? 
is it is it really bothering you this kind of a question when posed by a sales person will immediately make the prospect realize yes there is something i need to think of and take forward okay so this realization of the problem would pave the way for other uh, sale so such questions will also help identify a uh, potential areas of opportunities where a product or service can help uh, and they help illustrate the different kinds of problems that the product or service can solve questions must be asked with respect to the problem faced by the buyer in such a way that the sales person can provide a solution to that problem in the end and that solution again is something which has to be realized by the prospect on his own instead of a sales person saying that yes i can provide you a solution to the problem the prospect must be able to understand that what the sales person sells or is uh, the kind of product he is into is something which will help me solve my problem and is a solution to my problem so it is again something which is very backwards the third kind of questions are implication questions now implication questions are those which are meant to make the prospect aware of the seriousness of the problem the negative consequences of the problem if the problem is left unresolved so uh, they basically try to create an urgency in the mind of the prospect they are intended to make the prospect realize that there is a problem that needs to be taken care of and if unresolved there could be seriousness so they are meant to draw the prospect's attention to the solution and this would also impel the prospect to act on his own now the implication questions are the most important questions in spin selling and hence sales persons must really concentrate more on them they must carefully state such questions because if uh, they are too negatively stated there may be perceptual defense on the part of the uh, client or the prospect and he, and he may just withdraw so it's very important for the sales person to show the seriousness of the problem or to exhibit or to illustrate how things you know to to make the prospect realize about the seriousness of the problem to make the prospect realize that if things are not taken care of there could be seri serious issues later uh, he must make the prospect aware of this fact that left unresolved uh, the problem could further you know be a bigger problem yet it should not be stated so very uh, you know um, fearfully or so very negatively that the prospective or the client or may may suddenly withdraw so the implication questions need to be framed very very carefully so if we had a situation question which was yes sir i i'm here to just you know understand so hope things are fine going on fine in the factory or in the plant so the problem question is when the uh, prospective uh, customer may say yeah there are certain issues and i am i am my production uh, line my assembly line is getting disrupted due to certain issues so that's a problem but then the sales person must be able to say oh is it really a problem and do you think it's very serious yes if it is serious so we move to the implication question and implication question would be oh really sir i mean this is something which can bring your uh, you know create problems in your in 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 final delivery of your product to the end customer it could be something which the competitor can gain advantage of it could be something uh, a shortage of this could mean many of your customers switching over to competitors so so such kind of a question that kind of a question would it mean that your uh, Uh, customers will defect but would mean that your customers and your would, would switch over to the competitor and do you think it's going to affect your market share such a question as an implication question is something which will immediately you know draw the attention of the client that yes he must act immediately so this is what an implication question is the need pay of questions are meant to make the prospect consider the value of a solution in terms of the benefits that is the product benefits as a solution to his problem now the focus is on the solution of the problem rather than the problem and the implication now so in this stage the sales person must encourage the buyer to realize and state their exploited needs as well as the benefits that the product or service offered by the sales person can provide and instead of 
the salesperson saying that he must ensure that the buyer realizes it. So rather than the salesperson telling the prospect as to how his product or service can solve the problem, the neat pair of questions help a prospect to draw those conclusions on his own. The prospect must himself realize that the product or service offered by the salesperson is something which can help me, the benefits can help me solve a problem, then benefits can help me, uh, you know, get rid of the serious implications that may result or that may follow in case I do not act now. So again, it is something which is very, very backward. Now the situation and the problem questions are used to obtain information about the prospect and the implication and the need payoff questions are those where the prospect realizes that the, the seriousness of the problem and how a particular product or service uh, offered by a salesperson can help solve the same through the benefit that it entails. Now, this brings us to an end of this particular session. The references are still in Kandif Govoni Puri Sales and Distribution Management 2017, Pearson India, and we have Rackham uh, and uh, Spin Selling at McGraw-Hill. So, with this, uh, we bring we come to an end of the fourth lecture on the fourth module of the course. I hope you found the lecture fruitful.